Arizona is home to way more than the Grand Canyon and has an incredible variety of differing landscapes throughout the state. Today's journey takes us to one of the many sites in the Southwest United States that contains evidence of early settlement long before the Europeans ever came. The structures we are seeing today are from nearly 400 years before the Europeans crossed the Atlantic. Welcome to the Wupakti National Monument, and I'm going to refrain from attempting to say that again because I am not confident in my pronunciation of that. This land has been inhabited for nearly 13,000 years, but by 1100 AD, there were nearly 2,000 people in a 50-mile radius of this thriving Pueblo. Now I realize for the viewers in the Eastern Hemisphere, ancient structures are not a novelty to you all. There are buildings way older and better preserved over there but there really isn't much left standing from early settlement in the United States due to the hunter-gatherer lifestyle of the early people and then the many fights over the lands that took place across our country, destroying many of the things in the process. And of course, dry climates are better for preserving artifacts than humid ones. Anyways, this was exciting for me to see. Not again. <laughs> I am on high alert for snakes right now. I just saw a little uh, gecko or salamander or something jump out in front of me. <laughs> so now I'm like, oh. I don't know. Are snakes active in the winter? They have to be, right? Surrounding this settlement is the San Francisco mountain range. And no, it's not in California. This is in Northern Arizona. But you can also see cinder cone volcanoes, buttes, and plateaus throughout this grassland. It really has everything in every single direction that you turn. What a view! I would build a house here too. Wow. I don't know if you could tell how haphazard this is on this cracked rock side of the canyon. It's crazy that it's still here. It was actually the eruption of a nearby cinder volcano that forced people here in the first place. The eruption made the old settlement uninhabitable, and ash covered this grassland which allowed the soil to retain more water, making this area farmable at the time. Thus, the early Puebloans migrated here due to the farmable land. I don't know why I said thus there. I think writing about older times makes you sound old-timey. The house structures left standing are free to explore, which was really neat to be able to walk through the buildings that were nearly 900 years old. These buildings are made from limestone, sandstone, and the roofs were constructed from timber. As the homes were abandoned, the timber was burned for firewood or taken by nearby tribes as it was a more scarce commodity at the time. This is a really big house. I really can't believe these are still standing. They're exposed to the elements for all these years and they're still standing. It's crazy. All the storms that have passed through. It's just, wow. I said they've done a little bit of work to maintain the walls, but they haven't reconstructed anything. So these are all the originals. When this Pueblo was at its peak, it was a center for trade for things like turquoise, copper bells, and shell jewelry from various tribes and groups of people in the surrounding areas, which goes to show you that these people were not simply surviving, but thriving. Even building a citadel up on top of a hill as a symbol of status for people in the surrounding lands to see. Something that is still done to this day, funnily enough. People like to build mansions on hills. Some things don't change. The views from the ruins of the citadel were stunning, and you could see the smaller structures off in the distance, as well as the mountains and the cinder volcanoes, making this a really unique and beautiful place to live. This place is really strange. There's a bunch of like ancient houses and stuff like scattered across the landscape, but there's no like 
parking to go out and look, of a, look at him, and it looks like they're just like left there. There's no trails to go see him. They're just the fenced off and in the middle of this open landscape that you're driving through. It's kind of weird. You would think like there would be trails and stuff for people to visit, but no, it's just you can look at him from your car. But yeah, they have a few designated areas they can get out and actually go look at the nature ruins. But they are like if you're driving through, just keep your eyes out. They're everywhere. It's so weird. It's kind of cool though. There's like so many they can't even keep up with it all. Driving a few miles away from the citadel, there was a building that rose nearly three stories tall that has been preserved all this time. It almost resembled a castle, but Arizona style with the red sandstone and all. Throughout the land, you could see bedrock has collapsed inward. This is occurring by nearby faults that are gradually pulling apart, causing these sinkholes and slot canyons to form across the land. And many of the houses are sitting on the edge of these collapsing areas, which makes me wonder how long they're going to be around for, because the land changes again, taking evidence of past inhabitants with it. The landscape of this region has constantly changed from human action as well as natural processes. The land was harvested of much of its wood, leaving it to be grassland. The soil changed as eruptions occurred and the land was farmed. Grizzly bears once lived here as well, but now only smaller rodents and evolved mammals live here that can get their water they need from food they eat, as there is not much water available in this desert-like climate. Basically, this area looks very different back when it was a thriving pueblo than it does today but there is still a lot of beauty to be found here. Do you guys see the tumbleweed over there? That's so cute. <laughs> In the mid 1200s, extended drought forced people to leave this Pueblo and move on to settle new lands where they would be able to farm. I can't imagine what that must have been like, waiting for rain for weeks on end and then deciding to leave your home, this gorgeous home nestled in this grassland, surrounded by mountains, to set out into the unknown. I suppose that is a common human experience we all share. At some point in life, we are forced to step out of our comfort zone and forge our own paths. This is something that deep down I believe we all crave, to build our own path and to create our own story. 